It's spring break, and we're going to be visiting Florida's Forgotten Coast. And no, I didn't forget already, but we are headed to Apalachicola, Port St. Joe, and a few other places that, admittedly, I have forgotten the names of already. Here we are, we're at Beach Access 3 at St. John's, or St. Saint, Saint Somebody's Park. There is the rambling van. That way is the Gulf. And over there is the bay. So I guess this is a fairly new beach area. Or it's a new parking lot anyway, judging by the condition of the asphalt. They're going to have restroom facilities over there, or more permanent, but they do have the Porta Johns available right now. So you can go potty if you really have to. And I would say go if you really have to. So apparently they're going to be building a boardwalk over the dunes and it's obviously not done yet. But they have another one over here and this appears to be uh, accessible for wheelchairs. Alright, so here's the beach. So it's pretty windy today as you can see or you can hear. This is the beach. There's a lot of waves today. Dirty. I don't know, I guess there's a lot of silt in the water. Not sure where the kids are. We're at the Constitutional Convention State Museum. This is in Florida State Park. Is it okay to film this? Is it okay if I just video this? No alarm's gonna go off. Are these like their actual like heights? Are they were they actually this tall? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking they're kind of tall. So there's also next to the Constitution Convention State Museum. A monument over there. The Florida Constitution, 1838. Florida was admitted into the Union, 1845. Right? That's the 27th state. It's 27th state, not one of the original 13. Well, this is the lighthouse at Cape San Blas. No longer at Cape San Blas. And I think, I do not believe this is the original location. This is the gift shop, not the original. The original lighthouse did not have a gift shop, but now they do. This is the John Gorey State Museum. He made the icebox, or he was like the precursor. An eight. 
Yeah, I just wanted to um, bring your attention to the church over there because that's the Episcopal Church. Dr. Gorey came here in 1833. He was one of the founding members of that church. That church was built in 1836. And the interesting thing about that church is that it was uh, milled, built in sections in New York. It's, it's built out of white pine. White pine grows nowhere near here. So they put it on a boat, shipped it all the way down the Atlantic coast around the tip of Florida and back up wow. to Pensacola, which is weird because we have plenty of those trees, which are southern yellow pines, yeah. loblolly, longleaf, and slash. So there was no reason to do that other than all I can think of are just follow the relatives of the money and they're probably worth Mm. Well, and all these people who were locating, you know, here came from up north, and that's exactly. probably what they knew and yeah. what they felt like. Oh, this church has exactly. to be made out has of these to be things. Made out of that. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that's kind of interesting because I have a picture of that church, the building that's attached to it. That wasn't there. It was just the church. There were no trees in front of it. It was all basically sand. Um, I have a picture of that monument that's right there that's mm. dedicated 1899, mm. um, and what it tells me is that. If Gory were standing on those steps looking this way, this would have been all sand too. Just you would have had two trees that hmm. were here at the time. Those okay. two trees. That one, the um, State Office of Forestry is coming next week to see if it's the state champion eastern red cedar tree. Oh. They grow, and I know it was here alone because they don't grow in a forest okay. trying to outcrowd other trees. They just grow by themselves. Huh. And they don't like competition, so it would have been probably the only thing there. So Dr. Gorey may have leaned against that tree. That's really cool. That is really cool. Yeah. So what is this building? Like, was this building? This was built in 1950. Okay, so this it's wasn't a, a historic. No, this okay. To honor this, exactly. John okay. Yeah, this is it. Okay. So let's go back inside, okay. and then I'll tell you about what Dr. Gorey did. It's kind of chilly out here now. Yeah. Yeah. So what he was trying to do, um, you know, first and foremost, was a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. And, but he was also vice mayor, then mayor, then uh, notary public, uh, branch manager of uh, uh, the Panama City Branch Bank in Apple. Uh, he got very involved with the community. He was like, yeah, but first and foremost, he was a medical So at the time, he had a disease that was called yellow fever that was very prevalent. Where I'm from, um, Fort St. Joe. Constitution City for Florida. Yeah, we Virginia just came. We just, yeah. There. Uh, you were at Fort St. Joe, 1843, a ship docked from the Lesser Antilles, and about a quarter of a mile from my house, there lies buried Fort St. Joe. They were buried in the mass trench. Hmm. Really sad. Yeah. Hmm. So Dr. Gorey thought, you know, that the. the Sounds absurd because they said, well, okay, it seems to be caused by bad vapor. I was thinking, when you think about it, it kind of makes sense because, you know, basically what happens during the summer, you have rotting vegetation, which causes bad smells. They thought it was poisonous gases. They didn't understand that it was a mosquito spread mm. disease, viral disease spread by mosquitoes. So he makes the assumption, okay, it seems like the changing of the seasons cures the fevers. So he starts trying to, to think about a way to create cold. He's just simply trying, he's not trying to invent ice, he's trying to essentially invent a way to save people because they mm. believe the cold is yeah. cure for yellow. Comes over the ice machine. Really cool invention because all of modern refrigeration, everything in your house, your um, freezer, it's all based off of this principle. Yeah. All modern HVAC is based off this principle. And everybody gives Carrier the credit oh, for creating the first Lily. air conditioner. That's a lie. I'll show you the first air conditioner. It's crude. But basically, it's based off of Gory's design. Hmm. Gory died in 1855. Sadly, he didn't get to see how his invention changed the world. Um, but the rest it's is kind of history. Sure. Yeah. And I'm originally from Louisiana. Yeah. I'm alive today because of air conditioning. <laughs> it would be uninhabitable. So as you go over here, you can see his patent that he submitted to the uh, patent office. His original machines in the Smithsonian. His um, statue is actually in the U.S. Capitol hmm. and Statutory Hall. But when I say that he invented the first air conditioner too, 
do the little hokey diorama, but this is the way that he used it. Yeah, like it was artificially manufactured ice, or any ice. But he essentially had a pipe going here, down through there, created a negative airflow where cold air sinks. Yeah. Sunk over the yellow fever patient. Someone asked me, said, when do they get wet from the melting ice? Let me assure you, if you have yellow fever and you're in that bed, that's the last of your worries. So, they would have to change out that ice, but it created a negative airflow, which cooled the patient, um, probably saved lives, because, you know, anything trying to help somebody get through that type of, of fever. But it also cooled the room several degrees. Hmm. That's crude air conditioning. Interesting. Yeah. Kind of neat. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. That was the abbreviated version. <laughs> the, the rest of your group is, is around there that's somewhere. That's all right, that's all right. <laughs> okay. We're here at the Apalachicola Nature Estuarine Research Center. What is an estuary? Why? Are estuaries important? That's what we're here to find out. It looks like the Nature Center is this way. Apalachicola National Estuarine Research Reserve. The restrooms are to the right. Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake Skin. Nature is beautiful. Apparently this is an oyster boat. They use a crankshaft for an anchor. There's the oyster tongs. Looks like a modified rake. The culling iron for breaking oyster clusters apart. Looks like the F. So now we've parked at the state park parking lot. That's a lot of parks. And there are facilities at this location. Which I think means there's bathrooms. There's a lot of sand here. There are a lot of interesting things to see and do here, so don't forget to visit. Thanks for letting me ramble, and I hope that you liked this video. If you did, please hit like, and don't forget to subscribe to the Rambling with Phil YouTube channel to see more videos like this.